glad you can join us today on the Shepherd's Bookshelf. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at uh, uh, some books on discipleship, and these are put out by Matthias Media, an uh, organization out of Sydney, Australia. They also have uh, branches here in the States, but they're out of Australia, and they, uh, they have been around for a while. It, it's a media outfit, that uh, they're a publishing ministry, that uh, is all about discipleship. Their lane is discipleship. So uh, they have published many books and many wor uh, uh, workbooks and all sorts of materials. They have conferences and lots of things that always wraps around how to make disciples. That is their heart and goal and that's their desire. And of course, since that is the, what the Lord told us to do as a church, the Great Commission, uh, to make disciples, uh, this, there's, this should be at the heart of all of our ministries and our lives. So what books are helpful in that regard? And I've read uh, dozens of books on, on evangelism uh, and, uh, and dozens of books on discipleship. And all of these probably or most of them have some value. And I appreciate uh, different emphasis of different authors about different things and have pieced together a lot of things from them over the years. But Probably the most uh, influential and uh, valuable book I have ever read on discipleship making is goes back to 2009 uh, to a book called The Trellis and the Vine. Now, what now we're looking today at not brand new books. These are books that have been around for a while, but so but nothing has really changed <laughs> as far as I'm concerned on how we make disciples. There's more technology today. There's more uh, more methodologies, more. Uh, uh, things that we can look at, more materials, but making disciples really boils down to the same stuff. And this book is really helpful. I, I would say in the ministry we have at our church, Southern View Chapel in Springfield, Illinois, that um, it would mirror the teachings of this book uh, almost identical. Uh, I, I'm sure that you know, some years ago when I read this, we adopted some of the things here. Other things we'd already come to that conclusion uh, some of this helped redef uh, redefine or, or what we were doing, maybe. But uh, I recommend it highly. I think most uh, Christian leaders, or at least many Christian leaders, want desperately to make disciples, but they're not they're not getting the the foundation of how to do it. They get, they're going after practical books, uh, going after uh, pragmatic books and methodology books, and this fad and that fad, and this conference and that conference, uh, and yet still missing the point on how to do it. So this book, written by Colin uh, or, uh, Marshall and uh, Tony Payne, is uh, excellent, and I recommend it highly. It says, a ministry mind shift that changes everything. Now, the idea behind the book, and I'm just going to read very quickly its thesis. They, they, they do their own thesis here. It says this, we will argue, or we'll be arguing, that structures don't grow ministries any more than trellises grow vines. And that most churches need to make a, a conscious shift away from erecting and maintaining structures and towards growing people who are disciple making disciples of Christ. Sounds like it right out of 2 Timothy 2 2, doesn't it? Which I think it is to a large degree. Their, their idea is this that most churches and most ministries uh, are wrapped around the trellis, that is, the structure, the programs, uh, the, what we do. Uh, in a, on a big picture, and, and they never uh, depreciate those things. They never say it's not important to have a church building or, uh, or Sunday school classes. or, or They never uh, in any way diminish the power of the preached Word of God. They, they promote that. Uh, they're not against those kinds of things at all, children's ministries and all that. They would incorporate those things in there. Their idea, though, is that sometimes we get so wrapped up with the trellis we're, we're, we're running the program. We're, we're, we're keeping everything running. And if, if somebody, if, if, even if a ministry grows cold and old and it's not doing the job that it used to do, it's not, which is making disciples, uh, that we keep it going anyway because, well, we just have to keep it going. It's part of the trellis. It's part of the structure of this local church. We've always done it that way before, so got to keep doing it now. So their, their challenge is let's take a good look at all the things we do <clears throat> and decide which of those things we're doing is really accomplishing the goal that we're set out to do, one given to us by Christ, to make disciples. 
And I don't think a better question could be asked. Uh, we're not all going to come up with the same ideas, um, uh, even in America or elsewhere. The, again, these guys are out of Australia. I'm sure their culture is somewhat different than ours. But, um, you know, what is important? What, what things should we be doing? The trellises are there. Matter of fact, uh, I, if there's any pushback at all, and I don't think this is really something they're saying, but if you try to have a ministry without a trellis, you try to have a church without the structure, ultimately it'll fall apart. It may seem for a period of time be, to be doing very well, but ultimately it falls apart because the trellis is important. If you have a vine that you want to grow, and that vine is going to need a trellis. Otherwise, it just lays on the ground and spreads out in places you don't want it to go. So the structure is not unimportant. But we major too much on the structure, the trellis, according to uh, Marshall, and not enough on the vine, what we're producing. So this book is about how to do that. And, they're, and they're, this is their signature book. This is the one I think laid the foundation for everything, although they had some other books written prior to that. But this is the signature book. This is the one that leads the pack, I think. And they're looking at how to train these disciples. They give us keys on how to do that, what that would look like, how we go about doing so. Uh, and they want us to remember that the ministry here is always around the Word. This is one of the things I appreciate so much. Uh, this is not programs. Uh, this is not methodologies. What we're training people to do, and training is one of their key words. They use this all the time. Uh, what we're training people to do is to be proclaimers of the word. They understand the word because they've studied it, and they're proclaiming it in various forums. It might be a small group Bible study. It might be one-to-one. -one, it might be in the sermons. It might be in many different ways, in all of those ways. But always it's about the word. It is the word being a properly expounded, explained, taught. And on top of that, are, are the people we're teaching and involved with, are they catching it? Are they now understanding what the Word teaches? And beyond that, can they themselves go into the Word and understand it for themselves? Can they feed themselves? And then, further than that, can they then go on and teach others? 2 Timothy 2.2 2, And trust these things to faithful men who can in turn entrust them to others. That's, uh, I think, 2 Timothy 2.2 2 is probably the best description of uh, what a discipleship program looks like, discipleship ministry, uh, in all the epistles. It's very simple. This is what we're to do. And this book helps with that a great deal. Uh, they are offering them very practical helps for accomplishing what I've just said, making disciples. Uh, they also suggest in this book, uh, and I've read this is I've read the book at least three times, going back to when it was first published, and then a few years ago when we taught a number of our people uh, through these principles, and then more recently uh, because we are using it again with a bunch of other people in our church, and I wanted to re refresh myself on this book, and again I was impressed with what I was reading and 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 thought so so many of these principles we've put in place or already had in place but they're valuable, valuable principles. But one of the things they recommend in, in this book was a two-year apprenticeship program. So what about some of those in your church who want more? And they want more than they're getting on, on all the other uh, venues and, and opportunities they have. They really want to dig in uh, to uh, study the Word, study theology, and uh, be disciple makers themselves. What about them? Now, not everybody in the church has those, those gifts or those interests, uh, so forth, but some do. And we want to uh, really accommodate such people. We want to do all we can to bring those along because those are the faithful men that Paul talks about and faithful women, I would add, who are to be entrusted with this word ministry uh, and to take it forth. So what do you do with that? So they, they recommend a two-year apprenticeship program. Some might call that an internship program or something else. Uh, some of these people would be uh, going through this on a full-time basis. Others will be, uh, they have their secular jobs and are doing this uh, in a part-time basis. But it is a equipping of these individuals uh, to, uh, to, to do the things we're talking about with discipleship. And these are individuals who are at least headed towards or contemplating going into full-time Christian ministry of some kind or the other. 
And the, this is a ministry, according to how they run it, for those that have not yet gone off to Bible college or seminary. This is in preparation for a more formal training in that regard. And I would add this, uh, since this book was written, there has been uh, a lot of things that have happened that, where I believe that, in some cases anyway, a local church uh, can uh, equip uh, their own people without them going off to formal training somewhere else largely because there's so much available today on the internet and, and live streaming and almost all the Bible colleges and seminaries now are offering training online. So in many cases, uh, this can be coupled together. An, an intern or apprentice doesn't have to go off necessarily to a seminary somewhere. They can stay right within the church itself, uh, doing doing everyday ministries for Christ in the local church, as well as getting formal training. It's it's a good time uh, in many ways to be alive and be trained. So that, that could add to it. Now, one if you're interested in this, tra this type of training, there's another book that was written by Colin Marshall, which is called Passing the Baton. And this book uh, is a handbook for uh, ministry apprenticeship. This was actually written a couple of years before The Trellis and the Vine. Uh, and uh, even though it's 2007 or so, when it was written, still the principles here are very good. It's not a big book, it's not a hard book, uh, but it, it tells you how to set up a program like this, gives you the nuts and bolts of that type of ministry. I think you'd find it uh, very helpful. And I would recommend that, that most churches, if they can, to have some kind of a program like this. You don't have to be a mega church, you don't even have to be a, a, a mid sized church to offer some kind of apprenticeship or uh, our uh, internship program, at least on a part-time basis. So the in individuals who really want to dig in on ministry of the word and discipleship making can get more hands-on and training by those who, who know their stuff. So I would recommend that book as well. And then one more that I, and I don't have the book with me, I have it on loan and I forgot to pick it up for today, but a book that uh, I would recommend written also out of the, the uh, Matthias Media, but written by David Helm, is a book called One-to-One -one Bible Reading. This is, again, a very small volume that uh, shows people how to sit down with another person and read the Bible, about, about as simple as you can get. Because a lot of people, believe it or not, even in good churches, don't know how to sit down and actually read the Bible. This book gives a basic uh, Bible study method uh, course showing you how to approach the Bible uh, properly. Uh, but it, it is not about Bible study methods as much as it is sitting down and reading the Bible with somebody so that we go through the Bible together and uh, train them on how to read the Bible themselves. And then they can turn around and do the same. Uh, there are uh, also uh, a, a lesson plan. I think it's an eight-week plan. It shows you, they show you how to set up a typical one-to-one -one meeting or maybe one to two or three at the most, but a small group shows you how to set that up gives you, a, a, I think, an eight-week plan, shows you how to read various genre of uh, Scripture, such as uh, the, the wisdom literature, the narrative sections, the theological sections, the prophecy sections, uh, how, how to do that. And then also it even gives you an a, a eight-week guide and worksheets that you, not, that you can duplicate. They're on their website. You can just run them down and go through them with somebody else. It doesn't get a whole lot more simple than that. And although, again, that book is not new by any means, what a help. Uh, that's something that uh, almost any church, any group of people could do. Uh, recommend it very highly. So here are three uh, books today out of Matthias Media, all wrapped around discipleship and how to make disciples. That's something we all love if we're in Christian work at all. And I, all these would be helpful. Now, they've written a lot of books since, a lot of materials since, but these are the foundational materials. Uh, I, I encourage you to read them if you have not.